Today I fucked up by 69 ing the chef. Today is game day. My girlfriend and I decided to get a bunch of snacks prepared for the Super Bowl game. We decided on some buffalo hot sauce dip, french fries, and some yummy homemade jalapeno poppers. Well, today has been good. All the prep for today and this week is done. Wanted to relax while my girlfriend finished up the snacks, after she tossed something in the oven, she told me she had a few minutes to spare. So, we decided to go to the bedroom and have a little fun. About 10 minutes in, my junk started feeling a little warm and tingling. I thought nothing of it, maybe she used some new lube or something. It kept getting worse and worse. I had to speak up, so I stopped the festivities and told her what was happening. She looks a little weird and says, I swear I washed my hands. I had no idea what she was talking about, and she told me the last thing she did was prepare the jalapeno poppers. Long story short my unit is sitting in a bowl of milk. Too long did not read. 69 feet d my girlfriend after she prepared jalapenos. My member is now sitting in milk. Well, that one way to spice things up. My dog had an OCD habit of licking and grooming herself until she had bloody spots that she can't quit licking so I started using this anti-lick spray to get her to quit. The problem is, it's non-discriminatory and tastes bad to humans too. About three years ago I sprayed her sore spots to discourage further damage but the overspray got on my hands while I held her paws. I didn't think about it but it is non-water soluble. I washed my hands right before my girlfriend came over. Long story short, she came over, we were intimate, we both noticed a very unpleasant chemical taste during oral but it didn't dawn on me until it was over that I had accidentally transferred the anti-lick spray residue to our genitals. The moral of the story, the anti-lick spray really works. On dogs and humans. Use any oil olive oil, coconut oil, etc. The oils will wash away the jalapeno oil better than milk does. I know this because I got some habanero in my eye once and tried milk first, didn't work. Then I googled it and someone suggested oil so I poured canola oil into it to stop the burning and it worked. JFC it's like the people who post in today I fucked up don't ever actually read any of the abundant today I fucked up posts about burning their genitals after cutting peppers. Wear fucking gloves you morons. Lol. A few years back I was living in China. Got some jock itch and my wife went to the doctor to get some medicine for my unit. Only, she got the wrong thing. When I put it on I was thinking, hmm, that feels pleasantly icy cold. Within a few minuets it was no longer cold it was hot. And then it just got hotter. I could no longer sit down and stood up. Then I started kind of dancing around. Dot and then I went to the shower and showered in cold water. Took about 30 minutes for things to cool down again. Checked out the box and it's hard to tell because it's all in Chinese but it looks like she got some kind of deep heat muscle relaxant instead. But I tell you what. That jock itch was gone, with one single application. But I'm not sure I could do it again if I had to. Today I fucked up by bringing up the fishy smell. Update double exclamation mark. To keep a long story short, I, 15F, was hanging out with my friend, 16F, in my room. She's on her period. You can probably tell where this is going. And we were playing Mario Party when I suddenly smelled something fishy. I said, phew damn. What is that smell? Smells like my dog. She just stared at me in horror before sheepishly saying, sorry that's me. Before she grabbed some perfume and started spraying it all over. She continued, I'm really insecure over that. This is why I hate being on my period. I got awkward and just said, oh. Few minutes after this happened we had to take her back home and after we dropped her off she texted. Hey, I'm gonna be honest. I was trying so hard to not bust out sobbing. I didn't understand and asked, why? She said, because of earlier and I don't think I'll come back over for a while. I responded, I'm sorry and I didn't know, nothing has been said since. I genuinely didn't know it was her and now I think I ruined our friendship. Too long did not read. I unknowingly said my friend smelled fishy and now she's upset at me. My ex-girlfriend smelled bad for months I had to say something eventually and felt awful. But, she went to the doctor and they said she needed antibiotics. It went away after that. If it's that bad she probably should check with a gynecologist. A quick google of this tells me she needs to see her doctor. They can probably sort this out with some antibiotics, it's nothing to be ashamed of and something that probably has an easy fix. Also reassure her that you will not tell anyone else about this and delete this post if there is a chance that she or mutual friends could see it. Well this sucks because teen girls are very vulnerable and insecure.
But what all of us adults know is. Dot she needs to get treated. Be as nice and kind as you can, and explain that it's okay, but that she should probably get checked out before it gets worse. There's things women can get, not necessarily an STD, that can make your nether region smell. If I'm not mistaken, I think vaginosis can cause that, and that's just from bacteria getting into places it doesn't belong. Reassure her that you don't think she's gross and that it can happen to anyone. Also, say you didn't tell a soul. Either she needs to see a doctor or she isn't washing and changing her pads properly. Either way, it was an honest faux pas, op. Give her some space but let her know you still want to hang out. It could be a confidence issue or something she doesn't want to talk about. Today I fucked up by making love to my husband. I'm currently 31 weeks pregnant and my husband has been too scared to have sex with me. I'm high risk so he sees me as completely fragile and hasn't had sex with me for weeks. Pregnancy hormones have made me twirly so we have done other things but I really missed the connection and intimacy of sex. We have such a good sex life and so in a fit of pregnancy hormones I started crying asking him to touch me. Now this man would bend over backward to make me happy and make me happy he did. After my first climax he laid back ready to complete himself. Now this is where I might have fucked up. I climbed on top and it was good, like really good. Until the gush. I didn't think much about it at the time and went to sleep. It wasn't until 4 a.m. when I was still very wet that I thought oh no I might have FD up. So now I'm sitting here waiting to be tested to see if sex with my husband was just really good or if he broke my waters. If the test comes back negative he will never find out I was worried or he'll won't touch me again until the baby arrives. I am definitely going to be more careful and not get carried away on his magic ride. TL. DR convinced my husband to have sex with me 31 weeks pregnant don't know if he blew my mind or broke my waters. Update. Just got back from the hospital, had all the testing and lots of cheeky smiles from the nurses. Turns out he's just that good folks. The cup and a half full of liquid that had me worried and my bed soaked was all him and pregnancy hormones. He's definitely more freaked than the doctors were and he has me on a strict on my side with plenty of support if we get intimate again. Though the doctors say everything is fine and sex shouldn't be a problem for us with my condition. They reassured me I did the right thing coming in and that if any more cough gushing were to happen definitely come back and get checked again. I'm minutes away from my hospital so no one worry. I'm well looked after and my baby is super happy and healthy. TL. DR. Husband's just a legend and my waters didn't break. You may be saying, oh baby, for a different reason next time. All I can say is I hope all is well and your baby is in good healthy. Fun fact, in the late stages of pregnancy, semen helps soften the cervix, so it is very possible. Hope you and the baby are okay. Not gonna lie, I giggled like a 12-year-old at the too long did not read. Dot. I hope you are okay, op along with the baby. But like most, I need a damn update. Cold sweat smile. I'm going to say that if you aren't sure if it broke, then it didn't. It's a lot of liquid. Believe me, when my wife's broke in our waterbed, and I weigh more than her, so it all ran down to my side, I was completely soaked. Today I fucked up by trusting my dad. Hello Reddit, to GVE this betrayal some backstory. I am 18 male, and I'm in my senior year of high school. This begins in August. My dad always dreamed of buying a trailer and he was in luck when he found a free pop-up trailer. I became obsessed with this trailer. I have a DHD and cleaning is my thing. When I tell you this thing was trashed, it would be an understatement. There were holes in the canvas, rat feces and trash everywhere. My dad made a deal with me, if I could restore the trailer and get my license and a truck before I graduate this year, he would let me keep it. From August to late September, I worked for months, to scrubbing the floors, buying a $500 canvas to replace the old. You see, the pop-up trailer was a 2004 Redwood Coleman pop-up. I bought propane for the fridge and sink. Replaced the wiring and water system, all while doing this with zero experience and learning mostly from YouTube. When it was fully restored I studied my state's driver's manual like the Bible and got my permit. Now the only thing left was a truck. I began applying for small part-time jobs but there isn't any in my area so I began having trouble. It would take several months to get a job however. I got an interview and was accepted to work at Raising Canes. This all comes down to this week when I got home from school and the pop-up was gone from our yard. I was pissed, 
My dad informed me that he sold it for $4,500 because he needed the money and there was no way I was going to get a truck. I am fucking livid. I worked hard for months, used what very little money I had to replace the canvas. I asked him for at least half the cash since I did all the work in restoring it but he laughed in my face. I had put around $950 in the pop-up and I'm so fucking angry about it. Not only did I do all of that I also upgraded the wheels, and the plywood that began rotting. It was basically completely restored. I am so pissed and angry, I cried in my room for a bit and I refused to talk to my dad. It's not like my dad didn't know. I walked him almost through the whole process of restoring it. I feel so betrayed by my dad. I am no longer speaking to him. This isn't the first time he's pulled bullshit like this. I would start things and he would make promises but when I would be so close to finishing he would break the terms. Do you guys think I am in the wrong for being pissed? I believed it was mine. I put hundreds of hours of work into it. My mom is mad at me and calling me entitled because it wasn't mine to begin with which makes me even more pissed. Sorry for the language guys I'm just super frustrated. Too long did not read. Dad promised me the pop-up camper if I restored it and got a truck. I restored it and was saving to get a truck and he sold it. My goodness. You have every right to be pissed and your dad owes you for the money and hours you put in. He should be ashamed of himself for conning you like that, and so does your mom. This has nothing to do with entitlement. It's actually the opposite. Your dad felt entitled to a trailer he promised you that you fixed up. He's only entitled to the scrap heap value it used to have before you fixed it up. No more. He may have earned $4,500, but he lost your trust and that is priceless. I guarantee this was his plan the whole time. To scam work out of you with a false promise, and then sell off the fruits of your labor. The prospect of having it for yourself is what motivated you to put your best work into the upgrades. That way he could sell it for more. Your best bet is to get clear of both of these grifters and never look back. Move out and go no contact with the man as it will only get worse with time. Your dad is gonna be posting on here asking why you don't talk to him in a few years. Three things people should never break. Promises, trust, and someone's heart.